Mm hmm. That's how it is. Yep. Mm, I see. All right. Okay. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yep. Yeah, oh, hey, 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 hey. Whoa, hey. Ooh, hello, all. Welcome to the stream. Um, tonight we're going to be doing another episode of We Write with Light. We're going to be editing some photos in Photoshop. And it is going to be the first time that we do a composite image, which is taking two images, blending them together, and creating a new piece of artwork. Um, something I've done plenty of in my day, but uh, first time on the stream doing it. So that's kind of interesting, I think. Um, I also have some a couple things. Well, one one thing well it's, i think it's two things but it's one box to unbox and some uh and something i already unboxed that we're going to do something with as well so that should be pretty fun um so we're going to do that first nothing nothing too special i mean last time last unboxing we had what did we do we got my battery grip for my R5 we got the what well, the most exciting thing would have been the wood grain cover for the Argus. Sub low bass guy. Um, welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming. Uh, and uh, what else did we get last time? I think we got one more item, but nothing, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Other than that, that camera cover, because that's going to be a big part of the stream. I'm, I'm very excited about. Um, I'll show it. I'll show it off again. I don't think low bass guy was here, but what we are doing is customizing. Um, this beautiful camera right here, the Argus C3, um, I think they grabbed the Colormatic. I have a couple of these. I have, and there's several different versions of these cameras. Um, and if you've been following the stream, when we shoot in Fallout, this is the actual camera that they use for the in-game camera model. And I'm rebranding it, customizing it, and making it almost exactly as it is in-game. Uh, and have a lot of fun plans for that. You can see if you notice, there's a couple differences, which I'm going to point out in like an act when we actually do a long term stream about this exact camera um, and what we're going to do with it. Uh, I'll talk a lot more about that and point out the differences. But um, we did receive last time um, this beautiful wood grain i know it's hard, hard to see on um on the screen because it's black and white i'm gonna be in color soon don't worry about that but this is a beautiful wood grain camera uh camera cover uh it is absolutely beautiful and i will have links to where i got that and all that good stuff at some point so if you guys wanted to do that yourself it, it should be pretty simple the reason i love this camera and the reason i decided to do so much with it on this stream is because of its simplicity it's almost 100, per, I mean, no, it is one, I'm sorry, there's no electrical components to this camera. It's all mechanical, so I can open it up and service it myself. There's plenty of U YouTube videos um, and plenty of service manuals that you can find online, plenty of ways. Hey, Jen, um, plenty of, whoops, I wonder how that, how does that sound when I bump the mic? Does that sound terrible? Um, there's plenty of... Uh, uh, tutorials on how to service these and it is very easy and very simple um, and so I am going to open these up and clean lube and adjust at least the ones that I know I'm going to want to play around with because um, these things do get dirty They're, you know this camera is at, you know at least 50 years old if not if not like 60 or 70 years old so um, and I should know the dates because they were manu there there's a range of dates that they manufactured these and it also depends on the the model they look very similar but um, there are slight differences between them um, which I will point out I do I am collecting all of them they're very inexpensive um, at some point I will have links uh, eBay links where you will be able to pick these up if you did want to grab one and shoot with one um, I honestly personally I have not shot with film for a long time I can't remember the last time I said service it himself <laughs> I will service it myself um, but if you want to pick one of these up, eventually I will have links. And if you want to help support the channel, you can buy through those links. And then I get a little kickback, affiliate links, all that good stuff. Um, so if you, if you, if it's on, if you want one of these, check that out. It's not there yet, but it's work in progress. 
Um, but I did. Okay, so I've got two things since the last stream. Um, first, which I already, I didn't leave it to, un I left it, or I unboxed it already. I didn't leave it for unboxing here because it is a camera, it's a lens adapter. Um, this, wait, I actually should take off, hang on, let me take off the lens um, and the lens cap. We're going to mount this for the first time on my camera. Oh, God, this thing does not seem like it's the most well-designed, but it's the only one I could find. So this is a uh, Argus, whoops, yip, 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 yip. This is an Argus to Canon RF mount adapter. And this will allow me to use the lenses from that Argus camera on my Canon so we can get some beautiful digital shots and we can see how it, those lenses perform on a modern camera. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, uh, the reason I opened it up, which is hilarious to me, they use, don't grab the background autofocus. Um, it's going to have trouble grabbing this. Uh, they, when I, I couldn't find these on the eBay link on, on this person's website or eBay store. And so I asked them, I was like, do you guys have RF mount to Argus mount or Argus mount to RF mount? Um, and they said, you said, yeah, I think we have some of those. And then they're like, oh yeah, we found it. I have a couple ER mounts, Argus C to ER mount. And I was like, no, 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 not ER. I'm looking for RF mount. Um, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just say R E R is the standard mount. That's just how will we say. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, just put in the order that you want uh, the Canon RF mount instead of. I found like the M to C or C to M E uh, Canon M mount for their subframe mirrorless cameras. Um, and they told me to buy that and then put in the notes that I wanted the RF mount. So it was a little sketchy, but I went through with it because these are pretty cheap. I think this was like 50 bucks. Um, and I got it shipped to me. And of course, the box comes and it says ER mount um, vignetting when using that adapter. John, we will find out, bro. You know what? You should follow the stream and keep keep following me because we will determine that. Um, but those are the kind of cool things that we're going to find. It, it, it should be... I mean, it's a, the Argus C is a full-frame camera, and adapting this to a full-frame mirrorless should not have, at least not vignette in that it is crop, that you're going to have to crop it. It might have vignette because the lens itself does exhibit a lot of vignette. There's a lot of, I mean, it's a very old lens design, so um, I'd expect it to not perform the best, but um, I don't know yet. We're going to find out. We're going to be testing that out. Um, and there's this interesting back focus adjustment on this thing um, that we'll play with. I didn't. I, we're not gonna really going to play with this much right now. But since I couldn't unbox it, what I did wait to do is test and see how it fits on my R5. So um, I'm going to put the 100 millimeter lens. There's only three lenses that Argus produced, as far as I know, um, for the C series cameras, or at least the C3 series cameras, which was the 35 millimeter the 50 millimeter and the 100 millimeter. And I do have all of those. So it will be fun to check out each, each one of those. Um, but got it on the, on the adapter. I'm going to pop it on the R5. Why not? Since I couldn't unbox it for everybody. Again, I actually wanted to unbox it to make sure I got the right mount. So I didn't open it up on the stream and then just get heavily disappointed. Okay. So let's see how this baby goes. Oh, you can listen. It clicked in. It's locked in. It is locked in place. Vintage gear combined with the uh, BMW webcam makes you look like a mad scientist. Yes, I am a mad. You know, it's so funny you say that because, like, literally experimenting with photography, um, I've always felt like a, a, a scientist in a way. I know that sounds probably kind of silly, but you do, as a photographer starting out especially – you, you're experimenting a lot with a lot of different techniques and skills and tools. Um, and it is just a big experiment. You kind of, you know, you come up with a theory and you, you know, you, you have your, um, uh, um, you know, you have your idea with what you want and then you just kind of do the tests and then you, 
I'm just butchering the scientific method here, but uh, and and you know I'm trying to convert it to photo terms, but um, I always literally told myself I feel like much more like a like a scientist than like an artist sometimes, um, even though the art behind the photography is, has a lot more to do with it. It'd be weird if you were figuratively experimenting with photography instead of literally. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, um, but anyway, okay, so I'm not going to shoot, again, I'm not going to shoot, the mount, the mount goes on there, these lenses are so tiny, um, but that's because rangefinder cameras have been mirrorless for years, and the big revolution with mirrorless cameras is that you could reduce, you know, or I'll, they say, you, well, no, you can definitely reduce lens size, but, um, the lens designs can be much more simple, uh, so, you know, like, um, Leica M lenses have always been extremely tiny, even their faster lenses, very small in comparison to um, full frame uh, DSLR lenses. Uh, and now that we have mirrorless lenses, um, or now that we have mirrorless uh, cameras, mirrorless full frame cameras that are not range finders, uh, mirrorless digital cameras, uh, the lenses are getting a lot smaller, or at least some companies are making them small. Canon like release their R system and then release the biggest lenses possible for their RF mount. Um, and then I think the 35, which I own, the, or I definitely own, but the 35 millimeter 1.8 uh, is probably the smallest lens that they had released when, when they announced the camera system. Um, although now that's changed. The 50 millimeter, I think, is now the smallest. Um, which low base guy, you would probably love the 35 1.8. I know you said you didn't have any... Um, you didn't have any RF mount glass yet. And I was going to recommend if you bought something, the 35 1.8 is great because it has a, a 1 to 2 macro uh, reproduction ratio. And the 85 F2 uh, macro is also a 1 to 2. And they're both very affordable uh, or more affordable lenses. Affordable is kind of subjective, but... Um, uh, those are two amazing lenses to play around with. And I do intend, I have some cheapo extension tubes because Canon, dude, Canon, get on your game and uh, release some extension tubes for RF mount. I mean, how simple would that be? One to two is right. Exactly. I know. Yeah. It got to be one to one, but I have the, the extension tubes that get me down to one to one um, with those lenses and autofocus still works unless, I mean, I know autofocus is kind of BS, right? You have so many macros. Yeah. You're talking about that last time. Uh, beautiful by the way. And I love your work by the way. Um, anyway, we're going to be doing a lot of this. I, I actually literally have, I have extension tubes for the C mount lenses. So I can do, I can mess around and see how these lenses perform at macro distances on my R5, which would be kind of fun. I'm going to mess around with that. Um, not right now, but I will mess around with that on a future stream and in future videos. I do have plans. Again, we are just starting out. That's why I'm in black and white. Um, that's why everything looks pretty silly. I mean, I'm getting just getting everything set up. It's just starting. So really appreciate all the support that everyone gives me and you guys everyone being here is just is amazing to me so thank you thank you thank you um and now we can do some real unboxing um i did buy a couple new things you know for you i didn't do it for me i did it for you all of course um let me put this this is my 24 i had my 24 to 105 on there beautiful lens um I spent a lot of money on camera gear. It's a good investment, especially lenses. Um, love to, yeah, I know. I actually, I almost want to buy one of those MPE 65s. I know, I think last time we said like, oh, get me an RF mount one. And then we were like, don't hold your breath. Uh, count me in and <laughs> to troll you endlessly. <laughs> no, i uh, never seen a spider in such amazing detail. Yeah, I, yeah, I, exactly. Um, Anyway, okay, opening this up. This is nothing too special, but it's some cool stuff. I think it's fun to open up new stuff, right? Is it fun? Ooh. Slicage. One day I will cut myself very badly on a stream. And then that will be real entertainment. 
Nothing sells like someone hurting themselves. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, the two to one macro. I was actually looking. I found one of those used, or maybe, yeah, I think it was the, I think it was that lens. Um, although I think the 100, I got excited about one of their lenses, a uh, piece of that just got me, Odell. Yeah. Uh, one of their lenses, it's a ma it's like a two to one macro, but it's only for subframe cameras, I thought, or I thought one of them was. So we got a real, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I did order, and I got these used, of course. I'm a big used camera guy. Used stuff, which I'm a big, I love. There's a website called fredmiranda.com, um, and I have a great reputation. Or I mean, I've been using it long enough that I have good feedback and all that. Um, and it's a community of photographers that, you know, there is a buy and sell for them uh, that is subscription-based. Um, and I found on there, I was looking for, first of all, more genuine, uh, Canon batteries, LPE six and H camera batteries. So I got one of those. That's what I just opened up. Um, not new, obviously used, but, uh, a little bit cheaper than a new one. Um, so that's nice. That's that, that means I have three of these now Zang. Um, and then I also got this little guy and this is all really inexpensive stuff um this is the bre1 wireless remote this is like their newest wireless remote that they have and it has if you buy one of their servo zoom lenses um, which i don't think i would buy it but i'm hoping maybe in the future they come out with something that's compatible with this as well um but you can you know you shoot start recording video um and if you use one of their uh servo zooms that are compatible you can also zoom in and out with those lenses uh with this you know from a distance or whatever so that's kind of cool very inexpensive especially used even new these things are really cheap so um i thought that was worth a buy we'll see i mean you can connect your whoa 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 focus um you can connect your phone now to your camera pretty easily um a knockoff do you like it is it is it is it useful are you getting a use out of it i feel like i should just use this as my keychain so i just always have it um whatever it was like literally i think i was like 30 bucks awesome um plus the guy had one of those batteries i was looking for so that came out really cool um so anyway that's some cool couple new items items um Oh, it's on your keychain. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is awesome. So you're saying there's a chance. Um but yeah, it's yeah, I mean it's a keychain. It looks like a keychain thing, although I almost now want to go get what I have on my keychain. My brother, my brother John there had gotten me uh the ZZ Top keychain. I don't want to go I don't know exactly where it is, so I don't want to waste time going and finding it. Um but anyway, I, I just changed my keychain thing to the ZZ Top thing because I got really into ZZ Top like last summer. And then my brother bought it for my birthday. Thank you, bro. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I might put that on my keychain and have that like eventually. Why not? Um, anyway, stop saying um, Paul. They tell you when you're talking about speaking in general... Try not to say um. I say um. I say like a lot. I'm from California. I'm going to say like a lot. What are you, you going to do about it? Nothing. You know, I'm from California. What do you want? Uh, so anyway, on to the matter at hand. We're going to be doing some Photoshopping tonight. I'm going to do the first composite image that I've ever done on the stream, which is kind of exciting. Nothing too crazy. Just some very simple stuff. But... Again, it's the first for the stream, and we're building up to some building up some interesting things. You know, I'm gonna get. I have a studio, a little macro. It's not really a macro studio, but it, I mean macro because it's very small, but mm, small object studio. You know, I want to do. I want to shoot on the stream, and right now the only way to do that in a uh, practical manner will be to only shoot small objects. It's gonna be hard. I don't have a big studio. I'm just up here in the dark room, so 
I only have a very small space, but I have a lot of small objects that are very interesting to shoot, and uh, it should be an easy thing to get started on shooting. So we're going to do that eventually, but uh, for now, we're going to be doing Photoshop, and, um, and hopefully my mics didn't jump. I think I got my mic situation figured out. <laughs> I think, and I think I got the naming fig figured out too, the stream naming thing down. That was like giving me some gripe. It was like always changing. Every time I'd hit, I'd hit stream, it would change. Even though I changed the stream info, it would, it would always, uh, it would always change it to something else. And I think I figured out why, because I knew I had two different. Uh, ways to change that. I can do that through Streamlabs and I can do that through Twitch. And then if I'm going through my PlayStation, I can always do it through my PlayStation as well. But now that I'm going through my capture card, that's not an issue. But it seemed like there was a discrepancy between what I'd set it to in Streamlabs and what I'd set it to on Twitch. And I think I figured out, I think I figured out how it was getting messed up. But um, I guess we'll see. Does the stream info look right? Does it say right with light? And am I in the art category and am I streaming um is it all yeah it looks good awesome thank you Paxmore welcome Paxmore and uh so anyway this is the shoot we we're looking at today this is an oldie but a goodie um I am going to be editing a lot of older photos I have a huge amount of content like one one of the reasons that this was so exciting to me is that I had I'd realized like you know just rolling in my brain thing thing during COVID what what can I do what am I gonna I'm trying to isolate trying to be you know as conscious about saving people's lives as I could like what was staying home and you know what what what's possible to do and I know I waited a little bit longer on this but um, I did realize that I have literally terabytes and terabytes full of photos and video that I've never done anything with, nothing. I've never done anything with any of this stuff. I've never shared any of this stuff. And I think this is a great time to start doing that. It's a great time to open up some of these old photos that, I've again, no one's ever seen for the most part, and sharing those. And now that digital uh, photo software has gotten so much better, literally editing these photos now it upgrades their quality immensely. I mean, I'm going through, I'm also redoing um, my architectural portfolio, which has been a huge pro uh, process. I've, I've been doing that for like two or three years now. And it, again, it's like almost every year they upgrade, Photoshop gets updates, and I'm like, oh, I want to re-edit that now again. So um, slow process. And again, it's like go back and forth and back and forth with it. Um, but, it, but going back to some of these things, I have some photos that I never thought I would ever want to release because of, you know, issues that I couldn't fix in Photoshop or whatever. And now Photoshop is so good, um, especially with things like noise reduction. Noise reduction is probably where one of the key aspects that they've changed or, or they've uh, increased the quality of that um, – has made it possible to get better quality results than what I was used to. Uh, and we will get to some images that that has taken a huge or created a huge leap in the quality in those images. Uh, but this one is not quite as affected by that. I, or well, no, a little. I mean, again, all of them will be, but this is not one where it's going to be a huge drastic difference. Um, just because of Photoshop or anything like that. Although there will be, again, a very small one. So anyway, um, this was, this is actually a project that I did. This is for a photo project in high school, but it is part of um, what I'm currently calling the Stargazer series. Stargazer, that's what I called it, but working title, of course. Um, people or a subject enjoying a starscape and um, very similar vibe to one of the first episodes of We Write With Light that we did. Uh, again, it was a starscape. It was a self-portrait, which this is, again, a self-portrait. I don't like asking people to sit for me for too long. 
and these long exposure shots. This is, again, a Starscape, so it was a very long exposure. John was with me on this one, as I recall. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely a high school... Definitely a high school photo project, and we're going to do some compositing to make this even better than it could have been. So um, this, also what you see, this is all I shot that day, or all, all I shot that night, rather. I'm a very choosy shooter. You're going you're gonna to probably hear me reiterate that a few times if, if we're doing one of these episodes. Um, what's up? Uh, so, um, oh, I didn't add, oh, I'm so silly. I meant to redo my whole interface because I can do. Oh, I'm not gonna do it now. I meant to have the chat in this on the screen. I did that for when I'm gaming, and I totally forgot to change the interface. I was like, I finished doing it on my on my the the PS5. Um, I t I finished doing it on the PS5 stream, uh, scene, but I did not do it. You know what? Let's do that. Let's see if I can do that right now. Can't should I do that right now? Hang on. I can do that really quick. I'm getting better at this. I'm and, and I can make adjustments on the fly. I'm getting better, but I did not I'm bummed I didn't I didn't realize that. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, add the source, blah 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 blah. Okay, so there should be there should be chat now. If you chat it should pop up. I think so. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know, Paul. Mm, maybe not. Done. Oh, I wait. No, yeah, it should. That should be. No, maybe it did it work. Can you see it? You see it popping up? Hey Tanya. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, it's on the bottom right. I guess it doesn't oh, I can see okay. It just took a second for, for it to refresh or something on here. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna get better at setting that stuff on the fly. I will try. Yeah, uh Tanya. Tanya, you're one of my favorite people. You know that. Everyone knows that. Um Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the stream. Welcome all, as I like to say. We're going to be editing some photos here, Tanya, if you're not familiar with the stream. And tonight we're doing some composite work. And we just added... I also just added the chat on the screen. That was fun. I meant to do that. That was on my to-do list, and I totally forgot. So, this was, again, this was... was a high school project. I wish I had the print. I know I had a print of this, but there was a time when I moved houses and I got rid of a lot of my prints. I was getting tired of lugging them around. They are very heavy when they're mounted, and I had a lot. And I was, I it was probably silly, but thinking back now, I feel silly for getting rid of them. But I did not think they were ever going to be valuable for any reason. Because why would any of anything I do have value? Where did you put the house? <laughs> I think I put... It's more that I put them in the dumpster. Uh, I think is what happened. I think I was very frustrated at the time. Thinking, no one's ever going to care about any of this. Why would I keep it? Why lug this around? What am I doing? And I just threw it. I'm pretty sure I threw it in the trash. But what are you going to do? I might have some. I think I have some of them. But I, I'll, I'll, you know what? That's something I, we can update for last time. Where did you put the house? I love that. Uh, so anyway, I wish I had the print of this. But what I, what I can show you, this was the first edit that I did. This, this was the image that, we, that I printed and used, which I'm actually going to switch my choice of which image I like the most um, because I'm going to be doing a little bit more Photoshopping to it. So... But that, that was what I had printed last time. Um, and I, let's see, what did I call it? Night at the End of the World. Whoa, Paul, you're so deep. Night at the End of the World. And this is a 
series, again, I, we, one of the first episodes that we did on this show, We Write With Light, was another image in this series, which I just, I just am calling tentatively the Stargazer series, but uh, that's a working title. That's subject to change. So this will be the second of those images, and very special to me. These are very special images. I, I love night photography. I'm a bit of a nocturnal person myself. I'm getting a little bit better. My schedule has changed a little bit, but I'm a very late night type of person. And uh, I'm always up late, always up at night, um, spending a lot of time shooting, just driving around at night, shooting random stuff. And I, you know, have this strong, this this, this weird kind of sense of, it's like, I, I, I love being alone. I love the solitude and the contemplation that you have when you're you're alone. But almost at the same time, I love people and I love being around other people. I, you know, if... I love throwing parties. If you know anything about me, uh, when I had somewhere I could invite people, I was inviting people over all the time. I love, I love throwing get togethers, but at the same time, I have this strong sense of, of needing to be alone and needing the time to myself and almost feeling like it's better for me to be alone, like isolate myself. Um, and that's it. Obviously COVID was a very interesting time. Uh, for that because I was trying to isolate but then I'm also I live with people so almost impossible to be alone yet I'm you know needing to isolate myself and it was a very interesting conflicting ideas and going out you know I, I, I honestly was trying not to go out as much as I can or as much as I could and you know you're not really private when you go out somewhere in public obviously so very conflicting ideas, trying to be alone, but loving people and wanting to be around people still, you know, and, and honestly, I, I guess that's something that fig, I can figure out through the rest of my life is trying to figure out what, what does that, you know, there's a balance there trying to figure out the balance and trying to figure out what, why is it important to be alone when I want to be alone? Why is it important to be around people when I want to be with people? Um, but anyway, these images just really emphasize uh, introverted extrovert, e introverted extrovert. Yes, uh, a good blend. I I hope. Um, but but this series is definitely an expression of that that need for solitude and need for self reflection and need to be isolated and alone. That that's definitely where I, my mind was with these images. A person you know needing that contemplative isolated state and um you can i hope feel that through the imagery but um that is that that is up to the subject obviously but that's what i was trying to impart with these uh and again this is the one that i chose last time but this is not going to be the one that we end up editing because i already i already scrolled through these and i will go through these so obviously the first two exposures that i took did not come out. There's something there, but I can tell they just, those were just test exposures and they just, just were not long enough. Um, and there's the first very crooked horizon shot. Ooh, that was weird. Some kind of weird graphical glitch. And then there's me in my plain clothes, my street clothes, uh, doing a test shot, obviously, probably at... Um, Let's see, maybe either a higher ISO, F9 on that one, ISO 400. No, so I kept, oh, no, yeah, so I bumped the ISO up. I did these first test shots at ISO 400, and then we went up to ISO 800. Um, on At the time was my uh, Canon Digital Rebel XT. And what lens did I have? I'm pretty sure it was a 17 to 40. I should know all this stuff. Yep, 17 to 40, a lens I will probably talk about and go back or, you know, be going over and talking about a lot. I still own the same lens that I shot, or I don't even own it. It is my brother's lens, but um, it is uh, a, an extremely, okay, first of all, very affordable, very affordable, very well built, very good range from ultra wide to medium. And uh, I, I love the image quality. A lot of people talk about it being soft. Maybe it's a little soft since maybe the corners or something. 
Um, thank you for clarifying. I know I'm not gonna disrespect a great man like John Walter by trying to pretend like one of his lenses is mine. Uh, I definitely have made more. And okay, I should have. I didn't even mention this. I'm shooting. This show is shot. I currently am shooting. This is what I have. This is 17 to 40 is on my R uh, right now that is shooting this show. Um, it's an amazing lens. Um, I definitely highly recommend it. I should put that, and I definitely, again, when this is all ready, I will put nice affiliate links. So if you want to support the show, you can buy the gear that I'm talking about, and you can help support the show in that way, um, especially uh, this older gear that you can get for very inexpensive. Uh, thank you, Nielsen. Um, oh, well, I'm working. Okay, that's not even – we're not even close, by the way. That's like an old – I mean, that's one of the shots, um, but we were just getting into it. So so that's the shot that I originally edited. Um, there's another one of me kicking back. I'm a little ghosted on this one because I obviously either left the frame or uh, came into the frame late, so uh, it was exposing the background. So I'm a little bit see-through on that one. That's pretty cool. But this is the shot that I actually know that I want to edit tonight. And um, looks like I already did some editing to it. I meant to revert it back to the default settings before we got into it. So I'll do that. Um, so this is the image. This is the actual image that we're going to edit today because we haven't done or I have not worked on this exact frame from the roll. So that's what I wanted to do. And I, um, I did say this is going to be the first time we've, we're going to composite anything, steals the camera. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nielsen. We're going to make it even better, believe me. Uh, this is a very old shot. Again, this is from 2006. And this was literally a high school photo project for me. And I do wish I still had that print. I wish I could see what grade I got on it. Um, probably a 10 out of tw no. 10 out of 12, I doubt that. Probably like an 8 or a 9 out of 12. I think I never got a 12. I think I only got 11s. 11 was the highest I got. It was always out of 12 at our school, at least. So um, what I want to do to this is I'm actually going to – I was kind of disappointed because I was shooting with a very slow lens on a camera that did not do well with high ISO at the time. This is, again, with the Digital Rebel XT – the Canon 17 to 40 f4. F4 is not what you want when you shoot uh, Starscape uh, photography, at least if you want to keep the exposure time down, because I definitely did not want star trails. Um, if I did want star trails, I would have exposed longer because this was exposed, I think it was like 300 seconds is what that would have said. Um, 150 seconds. Is that what I ended up doing? Yeah, 150 seconds. And you're going to get some motion blur or, you know, star trails in, in the sky at those long exposures. You got to keep the exposure time a little bit shorter if you want the uh, stars to look like pinpoint light sources. So I definitely could not capture with the gear that I had at the time f4 lens i think iso 800 if i remember correctly that was probably the limit that i was willing to go on that camera before the grain and noise got so bad that i just thought the quality was too low uh, figuratively high school project right uh um that's the same camera i have now or a similar one double xti dude great camera yeah well what i would love to prove is that even those cameras these old camera they can get amazing results with them my buddy gary oh i don't think he's here but um, my buddy gary shoots with the seven the original canon 7d um and you know that's a very old camera now but he gets um, i'm always extremely impressed with the results he gets i i'm not one to judge people off of their gear i don't think i don't i don't adhere to that you know, I, I don't care what people shoot with. I care about the results. I care about the work. I care about the self-expression. And I, you know, I don't, I don't judge people off of what they shoot. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
You guys sound like such a good group of people. You gave him, low base guy, you gave him a, gifted him a camera. Holy crap. Like, that's the kind of stuff I would love to be able to do, which I will definitely do when I have the ability. I, currently, um, I don't even care about the results. <laughs> right. Just shoot, man. Again, that's kind of what, that's kind of what I would love to promote on this show more than anything is just shooting. Um, Tanya, who's new, I was trying to get Tanya into photography a little while ago. Um, I don't know if that worked. We were, we were in Catalina together. I don't know if you remember that Tanya, but I remember trying to get you into photography a little bit. Um, that doesn't sound like something I do. <laughs> anyway, you guys all sound so amazing. I'm around, you know, I know you're amazing just from what you've done for me. I'll tell you that. Um, so anyway, let's get down to the business at hand here. Uh, First thing, let's open up both these images. Okay, so anyway, actually, first thing, this is the image we're going to do. It looks like this was the last exposure I took. And again, I only took a few of these because, okay, other thing to remember, or at least that I can remember, when you do long exposures on digital cameras, they have something called long exposure noise reduction, which usually takes, as far as I can remember, the exact same amount of time that the exposure took to... Um, take effect so if you do long exposure noise reduction on a 150 second exposure you have to wait another 150 seconds for the noise reduction to come in because i believe it basically exposes a complete black frame and then uses the information from the black frame it's creating to reduce the noise um, but i could be wrong don't turn i turn that off yeah i don't know if it's necessary or not i should do some more tests or look into some tests um but Either way, I definitely remember when I was doing these back in the day, I'd do the exposure for that long, and then it was just like a tedious, you know, double time to wait for those results to come back. And, uh, you know, 150, 150 seconds probably doesn't sound long, but again, I am the one posing here in this photo. So, uh, very, and I'm, you know, maybe I'm an impatient person. I don't know. Am I impatient? Who knows? Um, well, okay. No, I, I know I'd like to say I'm patient, but I don't, I don't think I'm that patient it exposes over and over again and reads the differences in the noise because the noise isn't consistent. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Like if you look at high ISO, if you turn your, your gain up, your ISO up on a, and you just look at the, you know, video feed coming in, you can see the noise dancing and whatever on the frame. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and that makes, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So it has to kind of like read all the variations of that noise um, four to five minutes. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. But you will notice, here's what you'll notice about these. And I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last um, star gazer image that we'd created, but I always pose myself in a way to be bracing against something very solid. So, you know, obviously here I'm leaning up against the rocks you know, you can see, I think in this one, obviously, I was kind of trying to use my knees to, like, hold myself or whatever. Um, but this one, I'm definitely leaning back, putting my hand firmly on the rocks, my other hand's on the knee, and just really trying to sit still. Very impressive, Paul. Very impressive, I know. Um, hopefully, I haven't done one of these for a while, but I do want to recreate. There's one in particular, one of my favorites that I've done, and we haven't done that yet because I'd like to do that one when the show is like fully realized, maybe I'll be in color. That'll be a good significant uh, change. When you see me pop up in color, you will know that it's a much better stream, or not a better stream, but that's that's like the f at least closer to the finalized version. He braces that way in case I kick him after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, I think my brother was with me helping watch the camera. John, if you remember, let me know, but I, I'm pretty sure, although I didn't tag the file. Well, you're, you're not in any of the photos. Otherwise, the, the file would be tagged with your name um, based on my naming scheme, my file naming scheme. But I don't – I'm, I'm pretty sure you were there. I'm pretty sure. My brother, John, who definitely pops up in the chat, he has been um, <laughs> bribable. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can have the XT. You can have the XT. Just don't take my 5, my R5. Just don't take my my baby. 
my new baby. Um, I can't wait to shoot with these lenses. Again, I was waiting. I didn't even mount it because I was like, I'm going to be honest and mount this for the first time on the stream. So that's what I did. Y'all got exclusive content there. Was that the date of the shots, brother? Um, yeah, that should be that should be the date. The only thing I would say is that it might be one day before or after, depending on, let's see what time, at least the time stamp. Does it say on here? Where's the time? I should know this. You're a professional, damn it. Um, I don't see the time it was taken. I know it says it's somewhere, but I'm just being silly. Um, but it might have been... It might be on 220 or it might be on 222, depending. We might have, you know, showed up um, on the 20th and it was midnight and this, you know, these were shot after midnight or vice versa. Um, might have been on the 22nd, but I knew we showed up on the 21st. So I, you know, put 21st. I'm kind of bad with that. Plus, the time stamping is probably not all that accurate. Like, all these are like circa this date in my opinion, like it could be one, it's like there's two day discrepancies that can happen depending on if I've set uh, the time correct on my camera, which is not always the case. Silly Paul, especially back here in 2006, 2006, Paul, I would have been, let's see, in 2006, I would have been 18. Yeah, I should have been 18 because I turned 18, 2005, I'm pretty sure. Cause I got to sign myself out of high school for the last semester. That was fun. Um, I always left. I left school so much. Usually go shooting or skateboarding or skateboarding and shooting a combination of the two. Um, so anyway, very few exposures were shot. Um, and the star trails, I did not want star trails. I wanted these to be very pinpoint light sources. And there's a lot of, uh, uh, light pollution coming from what is, and you can see it. I almost wish I did some more frames with more of the city, but over here, um, I believe that's going to be Palos Verdes. Uh, I believe. I believe that would be technically Palos Verdes. I did a shot similar to this from Malibu. I have a lot of photography from Malibu because that's the area we grew up in, and I love the beach. Um, and uh, I kind of wish I did some more compositions with the city lights because of all the noise pollution. It would have, it probably would have felt nice to see some of that. Like I'm seeing a bit of this here, and that that glow looks pretty cool. But whatever, 2020 hindsight. Um, but that did definitely reduce the total amount of stars we could see, especially on this left side of the frame where you can see there's just no stars in there. So I did also pull a star field that I had from another shoot this same year. Um, this was taken a few months later. Same camera, similar subject, so the, they should blend very well. The reason I wanted to do this is because this, this stream is going to be the first time I've done some comp, um, composite work in Photoshop on here. And um, also, I've never got, again, I, I didn't edit this exact image yet, this frame from this roll. So um, I kind of wanted to change it up. I did that last time on one of them, too, where I had edited a different one. And it was, you know, now my style has changed, my tastes have changed, and I edited a different one. Um, what was the date of those shots? Did I already say this to you or not? 2006, yeah, 221. Did I say that? I know I went on a rant. If I was there, I'd probably be shooting too. I would think so. I would think you were, but, you know, who knows? Um, with the 10D, probably with the 10D. I shot, I shot some stuff with the 10D. I will eventually. I'd love to pull up some of the first digital images I took, which would have been with um, my brother's 10D, which I, I was so – I thought that camera was the coolest thing in the world when you got that. Um. But anyway, this star field is, is taken with the same camera, similar exposure parameters, except this one was exposed for a lot less time to reduce the amount of star trails. Um, and this is actually also taken from a day that I will edit some photos from. I have some beautiful photos that I'm very happy about that I couldn't, I did not like when I first looked at them and now looking back at them now, I actually really enjoy them. So 
we're just going to do a very simple star field composite um, on this image. Um, so I'm going to open up both of these so that we can kind of synchronize the color and make sure that they're going to blend well with each other. And uh, the first thing I want to do, I, I can tell right off the bat, color temperature was way too warm, way too warm. Um, so let's cool that down. Um, it's always interesting how the, the cooler you go, the brighter the exposure gets, because I think it's basically just increasing the blue channel and reducing the red channel. It also seems to smooth out a lot of the color noise. When you kind of cool it down, uh, it could be, could just be a, could just be me making shit up in my head, but um, definitely feels like it. Um, so I'm gonna go full. I'm gonna go f all the way to 2,000 Kelvin to get this guy blue. Um, I like I like a cooler look to these these stargazer images. I think that's fitting for the subject matter. Um, so let's do full 2000 blue, and then let's actually go into this one. We'll set that one to 2000 since we know that's where we're going to want it to be. Um, so those match at least as much as they can. This shot, I obviously was at a low angle looking up. By the way, these are not, in terms of being uh, accurate astronomically, <laughs> No, these are not going to line up because this is this is months after, so the star field has completely changed. The angle I'm looking at is completely different. This is like a fantasy image that we're basically going to create, and Neil deGrasse Tyson would be very angry at me. I don't know if you've ever heard him rant about the star field that they used in Titanic um, for the scene where they're on the little raft at the end. I think that's what he's talking about. Um, he He, like, you know, he literally... From what I've heard, and I have not fact-checked this, but um, Neil deGrasse Tyson you know, got in touch with James Cameron and told him, like, hey, you use that you, that's completely different star field than the, if they, that, the stars would be completely different at that time of year in that hemisphere and all that stuff. Uh, will he give you a DeGrasse kicking? Yes, <laughs> DeGrasse kicking, yeah. That's a good one. If you haven't, dude, did you originate that? That's genius. The grass kicking. Um, but he uh, uh, he's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, 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 from what I heard on the Blu-ray, I think on the Blu-ray or one of the one of the, the newer editions of that movie, James Cameron changed from what I heard. He changed the star field to be accurate. But um, I'd have to look into that. So don't take my word for it. Do your own fact checking. I am merely a good Samaritan. I can't be the only one who said that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You could be. You could be. Don't discount your genius uh, comedic abilities, please. I like them. I like it. Um, so anyway, okay. So we got the color temperature that's that's gonna match. So we know those are gonna blend, at least color wise, and. The next thing we gonna do, let's get the exposure, we'll brighten the exposure. Ooh, look at that grain. You know, it's funny because I, 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 I would think I, I would like hate the grain of older digital cameras, but sometimes I actually really do like the grain structure that I see. Like, I mean, this honestly does not bother me all that much. It does look pretty organic, as a lot of people would say. Um, but that's obviously a very subjective statement. What I hate, I hate, you know, banding, which is like the cross hatch straight line pattern that I don't see much of it here. Maybe on this side, there's a little bit of these band. No, I don't know. Like this camera was okay. And I just pushed the exposure one stop. So that would definitely accentuate it at this high of an ISO. But, um, Th those are the like if it doesn't look natural that's that's usually what ends up looking very distracting so um these older this older digital rebel seems to do a pretty good job with the grain structure I've, i i remember being pretty impressed i've looked back and again i will be going back to a lot of images older images i took and 
I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the grain structure on here. It looks very nice. It doesn't look too digital, in my opinion. Um, but again, very subjective, as is everything in photography. Um, so I don't think we need to be that bright of an exposure. Um, yeah, this looks okay. I'm actually also, because I'm going to be bringing this into Photoshop, I'm going to leave it fairly low contrast, and we're going to add contrast after I get it into Photoshop. Um, grain from that camera is very nice. I don't mind having it in my photos. Right, exactly. Yeah, the XTI also, I, I'm pretty sure I own that camera at a certain point because there was – there was a time when I, I really wanted to buy every Rebel that came out. I was like, these are my cameras, you know. I'm, I'm going to buy every single one of them. Uh, and what was very interesting back back then, and they still Canon still does this, their lower-end camera series usually have the same sensor as their uh, at least their mid-range pro cameras. So the 10D and the original Rebel, Digital Rebel, had the same sensor, the same 6.3 megapixel sensor. And then when the uh, Canon 20D came out, they did the same thing. The Digital Rebel XT, that had the same exact 8 megapixel sensor. So you could buy almost the same image quality without spending as much money on the Pro Series bodies, which basically just got you better autofocus, better build for the body, maybe a higher frame rate, things like that, um, which, you know, now the gap in those categories is, I don't know, actually it's probably not even changing that much. I mean, the R3 now shoots 30 frames per second, whereas the R5, which is, you know, different resolution or whatever, but um, the R5 does 20, which is, you know, kind of different camera categories, but um, very cool that you could get the same professional level image quality and i do remember going to the store and buying my xt um begging my parents to let me borrow some money good business practices i think yeah it's yeah right i mean it's cool that they do that um so anyway grain structure looks great grain structure looks pretty cool um especially for this image you know i'm not i'm not intending to print this at least not right now. I mean, eventually, if you're watching this stream later, um, eventually I will love. To, I would love to have prints that people can buy. I'm working on that process. I'm trying to figure out how I can do that um, practically um, and things that people actually would want to buy. But um, maybe at some point this will be up. I definitely wouldn't have this printed very large. I think it's going to be. It's a lot more well suited for like. Like, I would probably print it on an 8 by 10 piece of paper, but print it a lot smaller. I always leave a good white border, um, and so I'd probably sell them, it probably, but probably even smaller than that, to be honest. Like, I, this, the, the image quality on this is, is not the best. But this is not destined for now, definitely not destined for print, ultimately. Definitely going to be destined for Instagram and digital use at this time, so... Um, I'm not too concerned, but, uh, exposure looks okay. Again, I'm going to keep the contrast kind of low cause I'm going to bring this into Photoshop and we'll do probably our final contrast adjustment last. Um, so the color temperature matching with the other shot was probably the most important thing. Let's check our tint actually. And also again, um, I'm going to do this now, but if I post this image, I'm definitely going to go back cause the way I'm editing here is not suitable for good color correction. I have a huge, I have a gnarly tungsten bright light source in my face. Um, and this is not set up at all for good color correction session. So um, I'm going to do my best. I do my best with the color, but just know that the final, what we end up with at the end of these, I might do a lot of tweaking to it, or at least a little bit of tweaking after the fact. So just don't be offended. I mean, even the crop, I think in the last image, um, I definitely adjusted the crop because um, I didn't like where I put the horizon in the crop that we did on the stream. So I wanted to make that adjustment. It's sometimes it's honestly, it's like, it's hard to make all the correct decisions live on camera. So give me a break, give me a break, give me a 
piece of that Kit Kat bar, you know. Uh, but that being said, just keep just be aware that this doesn't. Uh, you know, I'm getting as close as I can, but there might be some slight adjustments made later. Um, and I'm digging. I think I pump the sliders. I pump the sliders until my eye says good. That's about where I'm where I'm at with color correction. And it looks like negative 10 green, negative green, negative 10 green is going to be where we're going to sit. Um, and then let's do the similar thing to our star field image. Negative 10 green, 2000 Kelvin. Perfect, perfect. Look at that. A little bit. I'm pretty sure that's the Milky Way. A little bit in there. A little bit. And don't worry about these. These are some gnarly um, planes going by, but we're not even going to use that. We're only using this very, uh, the upper half, or the more like the upper third of this exact image, this image for the star field. So we won't even need to deal with any of those. Same way, we're not going to deal. I There's these big, which I will do. Um, no, I want the heel brush. What is the heel brush? I need to learn the hotkeys here. B makes sense. Um, I I would get rid of these. Um, what are dust on the sensor? This is pre the XT is pre um, uh, spot removal or dust removal sensor dust removal. So um, there's there is a lot of dust on the sensor. Um, there's actually one. So anyway, the ones in the sky, I love I say that I'm not going to do that, but I did it anyway because it's so simple. Um, there's one right here that I notice, a dark spot that I do not like. So that's fine. I don't think I see any other major ones. Like that's something I would definitely change after the fact. I'm not offended. Good. Good. Um, yeah, so that looks pretty clean in terms of those dust spots. Again, like I said, I wasn't going to do it, and then I did it. That's me. Um, let's get the, exp the exposure on this. Could probably come up a little bit just to match, kind of. I'm, I'm going to match them a little bit better once we get them into Photoshop. Because, again, the elevation I was shooting at, this is obviously at sea level, because I'm at sea level, this is definitely in the mountains just above Malibu um, at a higher sea level. Again, I'm looking at a completely different um, hemisphere. We're not different hemisphere, but different. I'm tilted up looking up into the sky, whereas this, it looks like it's almost very zero tilt looking straight out um, across the ocean almost. Um, probably tilted down a little bit. I don't know. But... Um, it, the color, the higher you get into the sky, the color does change. So we're going to blend those, which they might actually fall in pretty well with each other automatically. But, I mean, I already tested this, and yes, they fall in pretty pretty well together automatically. But um, we will make sure that they blend perfectly when we get it in there. So um, that looks pretty good. Let's see, what else would I do? Maybe some noise reduction. Again, there's not much else I would want to do to this until we get into Photoshop. Um, so maybe, see, I don't even know if I'd want to. I don't mind the grain all that much. We'll do a little bit of color noise reduction just to give us a little bit of help. Color smoothness definitely helps if you have a lot of blotchiness. I don't see too much blotchiness, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that up anyway. Color noise reduction is fine. That looks good. And then I actually match that. What did we have it at? What did we have it at? 2530. 2530. And then what did I set the smoothness to on there? I know I could sync them, but whatever. 60, 60, 60, okay. A little bit more smoothness. Does this one need more smoothness? No, but you know what? I 
think it might need a little bit less magenta, this one, comparatively. So let's actually grab, let's actually do just a little, yeah. Yeah, it's more like a negative 20. And then this one also, actually, now, let's do like, no, it's negative, no, negative 12. Okay, close enough for government work, eh? As my Canadian friends would say. Um, so, yeah, those look fine. So, let's open, we'll open both of those up in Photo Chopper. Get to the Photo Chopper. Tanya, it's so cool to have you here. Tanya. Okay, so, oh, you know what I didn't do, although I'll do that here, is I didn't correct the horizon, but that's easy fix. Easy crop fix. Uh, easy, easy, easy. Again, I've, I've said this on one of the other streams. Uh, when you have, when you're shooting the ocean and you're looking either up or down the coast, when you bubble level, it, it doesn't always look like you're bubble leveled because the ocean will kind of appear to be either slanted, or at least that's been my experience and maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, but it, it's actually not actually, you know what? You know, I don't want to do this here. It's harder to do it in Photoshop. Hang on. Let's go back. I just want to do it in the raw. That's all. Not that it makes a big difference, but that's fine. It's actually what it is. It's just that grid lines are much better. Um, uh, it's much better to line this up here just because of the way, and I'm sure I could set it in Photoshop to do a similar thing, but perfect, point 0.4. Get that horizon to look pretty straight. That looks pretty good. Yeah, plus point 0.4. Not too far off, but you know, enough to, uh, and then we'll scale it up. Here, actually just constrain the crop, right? Yeah, easy breezy. Sweet. And then again, we'll open these up in Photoshop. -a. You didn't kick up the 40, 40, 3D, 3D, 3. No, not yet. Salary man. I should have that. I'm gonna get. I do want to have some fun audio cues, especially when I'm gaming. I don't know if Photoshop's. I mean, no. I, I got some funny Photoshop stuff that I could probably throw in. I don't want to be too much of a goofball. I want you guys to kind of take me seriously. Um. Anyway. Okay, so the horizon's straight. Easy, easy, easy. And all we're going to do, let's just drag this sucker. Again, it's the same camera, same resolution, so it should fall in pretty easily. And I am actually, I don't want to delete anything, so I'm going to use a, 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 a mask, right? Right? Vector mask, as they call Wait, is it vector mask? Is that what they call it? Vector mask? Whatever, a mask in this guy. I just don't want to delete anything. I always want to bring it back back if I need to so um, for now we're gonna go into the mask and just mask out the area we don't need which actually let's make sure um, we're just gonna go just about to the horizon It's interesting, the horizon like bulges in the middle. That might be something to do with the lens distortion. Um, I don't know enough about it. Okay. And then we're actually just going to brush. Whoops, 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 Just brush this away. Oh, what did I do? 
What did you do, sir? Okay. So we'll brush that away for now. And just put a nice happy tree right there. Bob Ross. This is, you know, this is me Bob Rossing it as much as possible. Just get rid of all that stuff. Make sure it's all gone. And again, because I use that mask, or uh, I, I can, I can bring that back at any time. Because what I'm gonna try to do is make sure the horizon looks like it's naturally blending into this unnatural star field that we've added. So um, I do want to be able to bring it back um, if I want to, if it does not look natural, which it is sure to not look natural right away again it's a hard line even though oh, what's that oh that's the tip of the mountain i was like what's this little black spot that's the tip of there was a mountain um that we kind of cut out of it out of that star field that's fine and then i'm just gonna do a nicely feathered Feathering is very important. Whoops. I'm just going to feather the bottom. Let's feather that bottom up till we get to the horizon. There's the horizon from the real image. And there's that star field added in. And then let's throw. We're going to throw a curve on just the star field image so we can just adjust that portion of the frame to have that blend in better with the scene. Boom. Boomage. Let's see, maybe that needs like less contrast. Something like that. Something like that. And then I'm gonna actually zoom in and then bring back, because now that I've adjusted it, the color is not. Well, you know what? Let's actually. Yeah, that actually helps quite a bit. Okay. So what I want to do now is just take out any of those, like right here, for instance, that's a star. You can like see the pixels. That's, that's the resolution we're working with here. <laughs> Bob Ross. <laughs> you can watch Bob Ross on Twitch. It's on Twitch. <laughs> Everything's on Twitch now. Um, this is the kind of star that I don't want. That kind of star trail, I don't want that. Because, again, we were going for these more hard... Uh, pinpoint light sources which was my vision originally so again that's what's beautiful about going back into this now um, we can make these adjustments and get the results that we really wanted when we couldn't do it because we didn't have the money or the equipment which you need money to get the equipment right so pretty cool pretty cool that we can do this now but I do not want these these kind of long star trails. So let's go back into our mask. And just kind of get rid of any of those spots where we see those star trails that are just a little bit too... A little bit too long for the vision we had in mind. And then also kind of blend this back down into the horizon as much as we can. Because we do want the star field to appear as much as possible. And blend in. Again, this is a not realistic 
Starfield for the scene. Not trying to be scientifically accurate at all. Just blending this a little bit better. Nice, simple composite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, it's looking very healthy. Very not very nice and healthy, in my opinion. <whistles> Look at that. Look at that son bitch. Um, let's throw an overall curve on top of everything to give us a better idea of how it's going to come out. I do I do usually name my layers. Um, I'm not going to do that now, but just add back some contrast to it. Ooh. Yeah. That is looking nice. Brighten it just a little bit while retaining a similar amount of contrast. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not looking too bad. Yeah, it's looking pretty healthy. Looking pretty healthy. Sh yeah. Um... By the way, the reason I did such a long exposure uh, mainly was to really glass this this ocean, allow it to allow the water to move enough so that it smoothed out the ocean as much as possible to just look like a really uh, fine, uh, smooth surface. The longer you expose a moving water source, the smoother, the more glassed it's going to look. So um, you want long exposures for water, which at this time I probably didn't understand that concept, but um, you want longer – I mean, well, you don't – okay, it's subjective again, but you want longer exposures. If you want the water to look very smooth – I do a lot of um, uh, architecture and interior photography, and when you have a wa like a pool or something – Generally, I will expose as long as possible because that will smooth the look of the water or the pool. When you see those really well-defined bubbles or um, sometimes they're like leaves in the pool and stuff, although I do literally have a pool cleaner um, that I bring with us when we shoot houses um, and we clean the pool. If there's a pool, we're going to clean it. Um, thank you, Paxmore. Thank you, Tanya. Um yeah, let's get rid of There's a couple more spots. There's some stars eating into the sea. A little bit too much here, so let's just get rid of that. Just get rid of those, Odell. Because that's a giveaway. There's not going to be... Generally, I mean, I think ultimately what I would want the stars, I don't think, the stars are, you know, they fade the further they get from the horizon, or I'm sorry, the closer they get to the horizon. I think naturally there's kind of a fade in there. So maybe I should add, mm, that's looking a little too extreme though. But a tiny bit of a fade. The real problem is that the the stars, uh, the trails are going to kind of eat into that a little bit, but that's fine. Whatever. We'll let it happen. We'll do that, and then what we're going to do... Yeah, let's see. I think naturally the scene, again, we had the... Um, city coming in, the light pollution coming in from the left side. The star field didn't have that as much. So I want to... Actually, you know what? That's silly. I'm not going to do that by deleting the stars. I'm actually going to... I'm going to do that by adding a curve and just brightening. Because if you get that brightened, 
from the left to the right, the brightening from that. Um, again, you can see the ocean itself and the sky in the original image, if we take out the star field, very bright on this left side of the frame um, because of the light pollution coming from the city. So we do need the star field to have a similar level uh, of brightness uh, from that left side so that it blends better. And I could darken the sea, but I actually like the way you have a little bit of a, it almost looks like there's mist, kind of a mistiness. That's probably the white water from the ocean breaking and then that creating kind of more of a smooth white color to it or a lighter shade rather than the um, really dark shade from the ocean. Um, but anyway, so what I want to do is on the star field, create a clipping mask. This red is not going to be how it looks. I'm just literally... creating what will be a bit of a fade in the brightness or a, um, a gradient in the brightness, rather. Go back into our quick match, or go out of our quick mask, rather. Sweet. Another layer. Okay, I will we'll name this one. I guess... what. <laughs> I, I try to name my layers, but if, if, if it gets, it definitely gets to a point where you're like, you have to, or you're going to be clicking around from curves and adjustment layers that are just way too complicated. So um, this is star field gradient. Sure. Sure. Why not? That sounds fine. Is it, it's it's okay. It's just fine. Boop, 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 maybe a little bit too much. Just so that you have that sense of, of uh, exposure changing from the left to the right side of the frame, which it did naturally in the unstar-fielded image. Just, just, just got me. Yeah, we'll keep the contrast too. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Oh, yeah. That's looking pretty good. And then let's do this. What I will do in, if, when, when these, when the um, longer exposure uh, stars pop through, I have no qualms with using a brush to get rid of them. No qualms. I'm an artist. I do what I want, you know? Beautiful, beautiful, because those are the only ones that we saw, so that's good. Let's actually go into this mask again. I'm seeing some areas that are just a little bit too... a little bit too uh, defined in the difference between the shade... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Good, good, good. Just blending. I'm sure it does not come through that well. If you can see these little very slight tonal blends that I'm doing, it probably doesn't come through quite as well. Laughs at Sagan in Sagan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, planetary. That's why I said Sagan. Yes. Um, yes. OMG. Yeah, so at this time, by the way, you said painterly, and I, I'm very flattered by that because I was definitely studying a lot of painting at this time. Um, this was in 2006. I would have been in high school. This would have been my senior year. 
and I would definitely have been in my humanities class, and we definitely studied Renaissance art um, and a lot of oil paintings, uh, and I was definitely trying to get as, as artistic as possible. Um, I love oil painting, by the way. I mean, not I've never done it myself, but oil paintings and those that do it. Um, uh, very impressed, and I think a lot of photographers go for um, a very uh, painterly quality to the lighting and um, the scene that they're shooting, or not necessarily the scene. Well, yeah, the scene that they're shooting, the composition. Um, I mean... Photography is essentially, I don't know, I, I hate to say like the upgraded form of painting, but whatever, I'm going to say that. It's like upgraded, it's like the upgrade, it's like, you know, it, it's like the newer version of painting in a way, I don't know, that probably doesn't make any sense, but um, it, uh, it's, it's good. You know, it's good. Um, let's try to blend this horizon. I'm seeing a little bit of a harsh line between the horizon and the ocean. So I just want to make sure that blends properly. Hope everyone's having a good night, by the way. I don't know if I said that. I do care about y'all quite a bit. Quite a bit. And I hope everyone's doing well. Take care of yourselves, please. What I like to say is, like, take take care of yourself because I want you in my life as long as possible. You got to take care of yourself, though. I can't, I can't do that for you. And you can't take care of me. Dang, shots fired. <laughs> Wait, when did you say that? I can't, I don't remember when you said that. Um, I should have, it'd be nice if I could get the chat overlay on my working monitor. Upgraded version, right. I mean, it's a s totally separate thing. I love painting, but I mean, I love paintings and they were always, I mean, the same way, the same way I would say, um, you know, video is the upgraded form of, of photography. I don't mean that in like, a, you know, a, I'm definitely not trying to devalue either type of art because both types of art will definitely hold a very important place no matter what, in my opinion. Um you know, there's there's always going to be a place for still photographs. They have a very different um, feel to them than a motion picture. That's just how it is. There's always a place. I'll help you set up in chat so you can see it. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could probably. I know I could have the chat over there. I mean, it's just eye line. It's just where my eye line is able to fall during the edit. And whatnot. But yeah, I know. I'm sure you have like a million. Paxmore's the best. Um, and I meant to, by the way, to add I meant to add the um the handle, I don't know what you call that, the handle in and out, in and out um bumper thing that you made for me. Thank you, by the way. So um I meant to do that before this evening, but you know, whatever. It's, it's how it is. Um Anyway, thank you again for everything. Durr, durr. Um, okay, so what else do we want to do? I think I'm seeing some a little bit of horizon. A little bit of horizon bull crap over here. Just too much of a obvious, obvious misblending of some of this. Ooh. I still think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do another one of these 
selective exposure adjustments just to the star field because I think what you want, um, if you look at the natural version, there is a bit of a grade going from maybe not as much as I thought, but I just want there to be a little bit of a gradient in the exposure in this star field because it is, you know, we cropped out a significant portion of the skyline where you would see that gradual exposure adjustment from um, the uh, terrestrial part of the image to the extraterrestrial part of the image, if that makes any sense. Um, so let's just do a quick little guy. Another, we're going to do another mask. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. no wrong, 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 boy. We're just going into quick mask here. And then we're going to do your hardness zero. Good. The more feathered... I mean, there's obviously situations where feathering isn't going to be the best idea, but depending on the line, the hard line that you're trying to match or whatever, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, I should also save this. Ooh, if I crashed right now. <sighs> Whoops. Why did I open the App Store? That is why those genie pop-ups are not the best. Okay. Just want to select. No, yeah, we want the bottom. We just want the bottom, and we just want another curve on there. And this is the star field. I called it the star field gradient last time. So, top to bottom, bot top to hottom, as I was just typing, starfield top to bottom gradient. Let's differentiate that a little bit. And then I just, so that there's like a little bit of like a brightening from the bottom of the frame to the top. I don't even know. Maybe bringing it down was better. Mm. Whatever, I'll brighten it a tiny little bit. I'll brighten it a tiny little bit. That's fine. And then we'll go back to this gradient. Or this mask. Hello, brush size. How are you? Just seeing a little bit too much of that um, fade. And then we'll come back in here. Get rid of the stars that are eating into the ocean, which doesn't make sense. Okay, I mean, that's looking pretty good. I don't know. I mean, what do y'all think? Spends an hour plus editing. I mean, oh, yeah, I know. Right. Thank you. Reminding me again. Let's just get this guy. Um, I'm just calling it contemplation. For now. Adobe RGB. Photoshop. Yeah. 
See, I think I've said this before, though. Is like I, I would not, I, I, I would not spend it. I this probably seems a lot longer of a process because I'm talking through it and I'm going over each thing and explaining each little thing. But it, in all honesty, this what I've done is is not. I know you you said yeah. Um, uh, it it would not take this long to edit if i was really just plowing through i don't think it would take this long to actually edit the image um if i was just going all out but uh, i also might be quicker doing it this way because i also know that i have to get through it so i think i also move quickly like when i really edit when i'm editing by myself i take a really long time like just i mean because I can, I can zoom out. I mean, my workflow generally will be make adjustments, look at the image for five minutes, just stare at it, walk away, do 20 minutes of other stuff, come back, stare at the image, make adjustments, stare at the image, <laughs> go do something else, come back, make adjustments, stare at the image. Like that's, I mean, it, you know, it's pretty hard to be definitive about a lot of what I'm doing. Uh, for me, it's very hard to be, you know, decisive about how it's, how it's looking, you know, it, that's just how I am. I don't know. Indecision. Who knows? Um, Here's what I want to do. I actually want to adjust this gradient mask a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do. Just so that the top... Whoops, wrong brush, yo. Wait, no, what? Yeah. Okay, I was doing the right thing. Uh, it's just because it's feathered. That's what's that's what's going on. Let's do a smaller. Just not the top. Mm 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 mm. Oh, I see. Okay, so the star field itself. Oh, oh, because we added that other gradient, this one, that's what needs to happen. This one can just come down a tiny bit. That's what's up. Okay. Okay, ooh, yeah, ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm, I like what you've done here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Now, it would have been really clever... 2020 hindsight would have been nice and clever to have all these footsteps removed from the sand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I wanted you to see those pixels. Um, and have just like a single row of footsteps just kind of walking over to the rock or something to really emphasize that isolation because I think I think the, all these footsteps and stuff, where I, I originally my thought was like, oh, it looks kind of like craters on the moon, and I'm on like a different planet, and it's a different texture. Um, but uh, you know, now look again, twenty twenty hindsight would have been kind of cool if I'm I'm going for an isolated uh, feel to have a single set of footsteps. Because, I mean, as it looks now, it's like a bunch of people have been walking on this beach and there's a lot of footsteps. So um, I don't know if it feels quite the way I would want to, but, you know, that's fine. Um, again, 2020 hindsight. Dr. Paxmore says there's some famous painter who was known for never finishing a painting. It was only done when someone bought it and took it away. Otherwise, he would always find something. Yes, I feel the. Yeah, that, yeah. Yes, that is how I feel about every project I get with photos. If I don't have a deadline, 
if I don't have a hard deadline, I mean, I'm just never going to finish it. It's like, how can you decide that it's finished? And like in this case, it's like, okay, it's it's gotten pretty late and I kind of want to go make an omelet. So I'm going to, you know, I want to make my omelet, you know. I need that protein. Um, so that's what, and then again, I will make adjustments to this later. So it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. Again, this is not the best editing setup for color correction and things like that. So it's... I'm going to take a look at this and make sure that I'm not being a fool and uh, making this look really silly. So, you know, we'll do that. Um, and here's what I will do, though. Um, I don't like th just this area over here. It's just so cluttered with so many, so much gross. I mean, there's so many indentations in the sand. I'm guessing maybe we tried to set the tripod up. Like there's some little holes here that might have been tripod feet or something. Um, and we were probably trouncing all over this. So um, I think last time we cropped the image to a 16.9. Um, I'm not deleting. If you ever want to crop and play around with crops, there's this little button up here. If you're not familiar, if you uncheck, I, I'm pretty sure this comes checked out of the box in Photoshop. So you will be deleting your crop. Everything you crop out, it's cropped. It's gone. They delete that. If you uncrop that, you basically have free reign to recrop whenever you want. So I always leave that uncropped. We go into 16.9 here. And then we recompose a little bit. We crop out all that messiness in the foreground. And that looks, I mean, automatically, it looks like a much cleaner frame. In my opinion. And then because that also reduces the amount of foreground. Um, oh, whoops. Uh, I accident. Whoop, wait, 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 wait. Let's go in our history again. What are we doing here? Modifying the curves and the crop. Um I think that looks a lot better. I think that looks a lot better. It also divided. There's kind of like three lines. There's the beach. The beach, which is our first bottom third of the image. There's the ocean, which is the mid third of the image. And then we have the stars, which is the upper third of the image. So that's kind of cool. And again, it cropped out a lot of that messiness that was, um, you know, just a lot of... Uh, too too much too too many mind. There's too many mind down there. Okay, speaking of famous people, John Mosey Hinton writes. Uh, speaking of famous people, I used to know a girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was like a chat rickroll. <laughs> Is there such thing? Is there such thing as a chat rickrolled? Because that's kind of what that was. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into until I read like the second portion of that. Bait D. Is that really what it's called? I should know this kind of stuff. Baited. Oh, baited. Yeah, okay. I was baited. Fished in. <gasps> That's probably where that came from. Never knew what that meant. I'm going to be honest. Fished in. Woo. Never, never understood Wayne's World. I'm going to talk about Wayne's World a lot. I have an image to edit. And some stuff to talk about Wayne's World. That's going to be... That actually, my plan is to have that when I'm talking about Wayne's World. <laughs> gotcha, brother. Um, uh, when uh, I, I finally have everything somewhat finalized, the first color version of this should be um, this image that I'm talking about that's going to be... I'm going to talk about Wayne's World a lot. Um, I don't want to give too much away. Um, anyway, let's finish this image. It is getting late. I want I want to let you guys go to bed. I want to let all my all my my friends go to bed. I know everyone stays up late. No, I'm just kidding. This is I don't know. Is it is it late for everybody? It was 12:20 a.m. West Coast time for everybody. I don't know. I'm my schedule is way thrown off right now. Um, okay, so I definitely want to add some overall contrast again. 
Eh, så lär vi över det. Mm. Very nice. Just want to darken a little bit some of them. Some of the mid tones were looking a little muddy. So just bring a little bit of contrast back. That looks pretty cool. So we haven't done any selective uh, adjustments. Well, yes, we have. What are you talking about, Paul? Um, but what we, well, the other selective adjustment I was going to say I want to make. Um, there's obviously some kind of flare. It's like very blue. It looks like there might be another light source on this side because I can see some shadows being cast. Not sure what that was from. It might be from some um, some houses or something. I should know exactly where this is, but I don't. My camera was not GPS enabled yet. Um which I also mean to do on my R5, like always have my, my first camera that had GPS was my, my 6D. Um, and I, I, I think I enabled it every once in a while. The problem with GPS enabling is like it, it reduces your battery life drastically. Uh, so that's kind of difficult to muster, to, to decide to keep on. Uh, the cool thing about your phone is when you shoot photos, it will always, uh, or at least, I don't know if you can... Can you turn that off? Do you guys know? Can you turn off GPS on the photo? Uh, you know, when you take photos on your phone, or at least on iPhones. I'm sure on Android and stuff you can. can much more customizable. Oh, you can cut. You can turn it off. Okay. Um, uh, but anyway, camera battery life was terrible when I had GPS on, so I generally kept it off. But I love having GPS tag on everything. I would, I ultimately, I would love to have that on at all times. Because for this situation, it would be beautiful to see just exactly where um, we took that image, or took this image rather. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of a little bit of a thing going on on this right side. With that gradient. Oops, whoops, oopsie, whoopsies. Oh, yeah. Okay. Buenos, buenos, buenos Aires has been wiped off the map. Let's do, so I wanted to get rid of this. It's not flare, but it's... It's just light pollution, not light pollution either necessarily, but it's just a color cast from whatever this other light source is over here in the sand. You know what? Actually, I don't know if that bothers me very much because that kind of balances the upper left corner of this image has a bit of a brightness to it, a higher uh, exposure level. And then the bottom right corner also has a slight different increase of exposure um, as well. So this this kind of balance out those two corners, in my opinion. So maybe I'll leave it there, actually. Um, but I will tell you one thing about Starscape images. Starscape images, I do not like it. Like, I want all the stars to be contained within the frame and like and not have, for instance, this star right here is just riding the edge of the frame so much. And it feels weird to me. It just doesn't... It makes the, the edge of the frame feel just a little bit dirty, in my opinion. Whereas, like, these ones, like, there's a, there's a good amount of space between the edge of the frame and the star. Um, where, like, see, again, like, well, that one's probably okay. This one, eh. So... I'm just going to go ahead and just completely remove those stars on the very... Uh, what? Not enough source pixels, you silly man. Um, okay. 
That's fine. We will just use a different type of tool, you son of a gun. Done. Done. Just clean up the edge of the frame. What I would probably do if I had the choice is crop to the point where all the stars seem to be fitting within the frame, but um, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, this again, I mean, this is so heavily Photoshopped. This is not supposed to be an accurate representation of uh, a landscape. This is supposed to be an artistic representation, an expression of uh, my emotional feelings, my feelings. And like I said, isolation, contemplation, um, that, is, that is the sense that I wanted you to feel when you look at this. So um, I'm happy to do whatever it takes to get you there. I, I don't need it to be a single frame thing. Um, as much as I would love to have gotten it right in the frame, whatever, again, this is a very old image. So going back to it now, I can make these adjustments. Um, anyway, that looks pretty cool, man. I don't know how much, I don't know how much else I would do. Again, I think, did I ask or I asked? Or anybody see anything? What do you guys think? Does anybody see anything? What do you people, what do you all think? Is there anything? Nobody said you were going to adding some lens flare. Yeah, we can add some lens flare. I know, I know. I'll get some flary image. I'll get some flared image. Um, I'll get some flared stuff at, at some point. If I, I was almost contemplating adding a moon, like adding a moon hovering somewhere in here, in which case maybe I'd add some flare, but I don't, I mean, I don't know why, I don't know. We'll do that. Don't worry. We'll do that. Um, let me just do, let's do some color tweaking. Let's just do a little bit of a color tweak. Um, I guess we can do that with our curves i guess we can do that with the curves um what would i want to do though i don't know just play around with the blues mm. no i don't know if i'd want to do that though i don't even know if i'd want to do that i think if anything i think i just want to re reduce the saturation perhaps do an overall saturation level. Kind of bring down the saturation just a little bit. The thing is, is that once once you upload, I find that uh, most web browsers, and I haven't really checked this with Instagram. I should check this. But once you post something online, you're looking at it in your web browser. I do find that the saturation seems to decrease a little bit. Um, and that might just be, be like I this is this is uh, um, Adobe RGB color space, and when you're on web, it will be sRGB. I don't think that's what it is that I'm seeing. The jump from because I I will convert this to sRGB before I post it online, um, and converting it, you shouldn't see too much of a big drastic difference. But I could be wrong. I'm known to be wrong. Either way, I'm going to do a negative 5 because I think I would want it to be like negative 15 saturation. But I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I found that once you post it, it's going to be like about a negative 10 saturation just from going online versus looking at it in Photoshop. Um, Moon with Earl Base will be in range in 20 minutes. Uh, just pulling your leg, bro. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I want to go there you want to go here we can go here again again I, I wanted to recreate some of these images um so maybe we can go back and create some of these things i would love to if i can if i can stream shooting some stuff like this that'd be cool there's a very special 
as a specialty camera that Canon makes that's very capable of low light video videography. Um, and I'm not sure how I would stream with it because I've never used it. Um, and I've never live streamed like that. So it'd be a work, it'd be a working thing to do, but, um, I would love to live stream shooting some starscape imagery if that was possible. But, um, again, right now we're starting small and we're going to shoot stuff in the studio first. And maybe what we would do is have some of these, um, uh, shoot, you know, we can do this if we shoot something like this, we can edit this, but we can't, you know, uh, it'd be, it'd be, it's just a very large predicament trying to shoot and stream this type of work, at least for now. Again, I, I would absolutely love to do it. Um, it's just going to be, it's just going to be a little bit of a, of a hassle, that I'm happy to I'm happy to work work on. I will work on it. Just seeing a little bit of a too much of a fade in the sky there. Yeah, and then again, eat into the freaking eat into the freaking ocean there. Gotta get rid of those there. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. yep. I don't even know if you guys can see these little minor adjustments. I'm just, again, getting rid of the stars that are eating into um, the ocean side from that star field we added. Oof. But my goodness, I think that looks, I think that looks pretty cool. I think that looks healthy. I think that looks cool. Um, thank you, Razor fan. Yes, yeah, we did a comp. This is the first time we did a composite, so we did add the star field. Um, this was the original star field, and like I said, with the date that I shot this on, um, I did not have the capability to get a short enough exposure to not have star trails, and then also it didn't make any. It doesn't make any sense because of the proximity we're at to. The city, the light pollution was reducing the star field to the point where it didn't take on the appearance that I wanted it to take, where this is more like the appearance that I wanted it to take. I really want it to look like we're looking at up at those stars. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the first time we've done a composite on the stream. Hope y'all thought it looked pretty cool. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I would do. Again, I might make adjustments. Same problem trying to... Uh, I had that same problem. Raise a fan says I had that same problem. I'm trying to, by the way, trying to get better about reiterating, uh, uh, restating what people say because I have learned that a lot of people listen to these and don't always watch. So I, I'm tr trying to get better about restating what people are saying so I can answer it properly. Raise a fan says, I had the same problem trying to get that shot in Mexico in April, except the moon was my problem. Right. So the moon moves moon moves real fast because um, that's obviously a, a lot closer to um, the Earth than these stars are. So you're going to notice um, that apparent change in, in, in its position a lot easier. Towing the line on whether I should read chat. Yeah, you I'm... I mean, you know, I guess it's a uh, you know subjective thing, but yeah, you know, raise a fan says I've been towing the line on whether I should read chat. It, it just I have I have been clued in on the fact that a lot of people aren't always watching the screen when they're on streams that they will also just be using it almost like a podcast. Um, so. Yeah, restating, uh, reading who's, you know, so that the people can feel like they're actually contributing and you know, they get their name, you know, if they can't, their name can't be seen on screen, reading that name out and then reading what they've said so that you can respond to it just in audio so that the audio track um, is a piece of content, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I would say if, if, if you're, if you're de debating 
whether you should, I'd say, you know, I mean, I'm trying to make it a habit. Yeah. Astrophotography. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. This is, uh, this has been, um, I love this kind of photography and what I, uh, what, what I kind of do not like about my own mindset on it is that when I was first doing this, cause I was, I was getting into this when I was first getting into digital photography. If you're not familiar with astrophotography or, or nightscape photography with film, it was very difficult. Um, film missed an opportunity to get the Milky way. Ah, whatever. You'll get it tomorrow or the next day. Don't even sweat it. You got it. Um, if you shot film, the longer you expose, there's something called reciprocity failure. And that is that I'm not going to, I don't even want to, I shouldn't even try to explain this. Um, not in monsoon season. Oh, okay. Uh, um, the longer you expose, the less sensitive, or the, the 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 longer the exposure has to be, the less sensitive your film actually is to the exposure. So you actually have to expose longer than the light meter might tell you. So like anything over one minute, you basically had to double. And then once you had to, like once you got to like, f you know, four seconds, then you had to quadruple it. Like, and I'm not, I haven't looked at, I'm not going to explain this very well, but basically to expose film for this long to get this exposure, it take it takes a lot longer to expose for this exposure at the same aperture um, and ISO. You have to expose it longer. So digital cameras do not um, suffer from reciprocity failure. You can get Lo uh, longer exposures done in less amount of time with digital cameras. So I was trying to do this with film, could never get it right. Finally got a digital camera, could finally do this kind of stuff. Um, and at the forefront of uh, digital photography, not very, I mean, I was not aware of many people doing this kind of stuff. And then once I, I guess, once I started seeing more people doing more nightscape photography, I kind of just lost a little bit of interest, I guess, which again, that's a failure on my part. I don't, I don't think that's a very good way. That's not a good mindset to have. You should always, um, if you want to shoot something, just shoot it. Like, don't worry about it. if other people have shot something similar or you think it's going to be a derivative. I don't think just don't shut up bad brain you know what i mean just do it um raise a fan says have you ever have you used the photoshop sky replacement tool no but i've done it manually for a very long time especially with architecture and interior well, architectural photography at least exteriors um i've definitely added cloud um which i, I brought this book up where did i put it this is not a new concept. Replacing the sky is not a new concept. Um, in this little booklet that I have, which I, I will talk about more and do like a full review of, there literally is an entire um, chapter on replacing, I guess you're, it's not going to come through on the camera very well, but there's an entire ch little uh, uh, portion of this book that's on replacing um, areas of the sky that are just devoid of any detail. And it does make a huge difference, just like a plain blue sky versus some beautiful puffy clouds in there. Uh, drastic difference. And you can't, you can't, I mean, yeah, you can probably plan for that kind of stuff to an extent, but like, you know, when you're on a shoot, when you get commissioned for something and, you know, you have to shoot this week or, or whatever, you're not going to be able to plan for clouds. You can't just make clouds form. And, you know, if you want the image to look as impressive as possible, replacing the sky with something more interesting makes a lot of sense. Um, so so I haven't I haven't played around. I played around. There's a there's a, a software called Skyloom, Skyloom. That's that's a very big uh, HDR uh, composite program or software 
I, I like, I think I played around with one of the, um, I got like the one, Illuminar, thank you, sorry. Um, uh, they, they, I think they were the first people to have, you know, a real good sky replacement tool. At least I read a lot about good people, or people um, praising their sky replacement tool, um, and then Photoshop did it. But I haven't played around in Photoshop yet. Um, I have two several times the tool is still game changing time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine Adobe would get it. Uh, I mean, Adobe should have just bought Luminar. I'm curious if they've talked about that, or at least getting. Maybe they hired some of the people that Luminar was using. Um, I'm just noticing this last little star right here, kind of popping through. Um, just a little bit more than I want it to. Get rid of you. And I think we're pretty good. Um, Aurora HDR. I, yeah, I think that one as well I, I played around with a little bit. Um, I downloaded a lot. This is, this is like years ago now. But I downloaded a lot of... Um, um, what do they call it? Uh, test when you can test it out. Oh my gosh, my brain is farting right now. Um, I, I I tested those. You know the trials. Thank you. Okay, nobody said it, but I I realized it. I downloaded the trial versions of a few of those programs because I do. I love combining exposures. I'm happy to do. You know, I, I do whatever it takes to get the image to look the way I want it to look. So combining exposures, compositing, especially with my professional architecture and interior work, I've been doing exposure blending and HDR um, quite a bit. Uh, and I used to do uh, HDR merging manually where I would just paint in or out the higher brightness or darker brightness areas that I wanted in the frame. Um and it wasn't until years, I mean, versions passed in Photoshop that I actually approved of the way the HDR looked through photo, doing it in Photoshop. And I was very, un, I mean, I've been unhappy for a very long time. And that's why I started looking at those other programs that I knew were better at uh, exposure blending. So, um but yeah, a Aurora HDR, I should probably check that out again. I should do a whole review, not in in on this channel, but for myself of some of those programs and plugins because I don't have any plugins on Photoshop currently that I use. I know it's a shame. So we'll do, we'll do some more. We'll do some stuff like that. Um, okay, so the next thing, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. It is getting late. It is getting late. I do want to make an omelet. I want to go make my omelet. Um, let's save again. When was the last time we saved? I should turn on auto save. It's probably what I should do. Uh, let's open up. We're just going to add, we're just going to put this on our white backdrop because this will end up on Instagram at, at some point to promote the show. And again, I will I'll reiterate this. I will most likely make adjustments to this image before I do anything else with it. So if I post this and then you notice that I've made some slight adjustments to it, that I'm telling you now that's going to happen because I can't, with, with the pressure obviously of being live and then also the bright light source that I have to have shining in my face, directly at, in my face when I'm trying to edit, there's going to be some color discrepancies and things like that that I'm going to want to change. So just keep that in mind. This I'm, I'm doing this just to show the full process, but I will most likely make some adjustments to this, or I will most definitely make um, some adjustments to this later. Um, and so we're just going to go through the full process of what, I'm gonna, what I would do. So we have our white square backdrop or um, template that we would be using to post on onto Instagram, Instantgram. Um, let's merge all these together for now. Just so we can drag and drop that one layer, the finalized layer. Oh wait, that's right, before we do that, 
We're going to resize. And I say this every time. Got to change my resolution to 300 on here or 240 on here so that those match. Whoa, inverted. No. Missed a button. Let's change this to 240. And then nine inches at the tallest or longest length. Diffuse it. Yes. Um, oh. What the heck? Why? That was this, this, this something. What the hell is going on there? I don't know why it's... That's so weird. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll crop. Let's just delete the pixels. Not sure what's happening. I'm pretty sure that's the quick fix for it, so I just did it. And I will figure that out. Yeah, okay. Fixed it. I, I'm still not sure what happened, but that's fine. Um, and then let's do a little vertical centering. That's fine. Okay. Okay, get that centered. And then last thing we do, looks like one of your gradient layers. Right, yeah, something was like showing through because I hadn't, del I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm not sure. And I didn't want to, I don't want to try to figure it out. So I did the fix that I knew I could do really quick. Um, little bit of a name on air. And then boom. That is more or less our finalized image. Again, I, I will definitely be going back and probably making some slight adjustments when I can edit this um, outside of my streaming time because it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to finalize this kind of stuff, especially with that bright light. Honestly, that bright light is like the worst... Thing in the world. I don't know if you've ever been taught this trick, but you can, when you look through your hand, it really can isolate the image and you can get a better idea of how it's going to look without all the, sh the stuff just mucking it up around it. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, Periscope, that's probably a name for what I'm doing, but I'm not sure what that is right now. Um, so yeah, that's that that is that's it. That's what we did. First time we did a composite. That's fun. I do want to do some more HDR at you know merging and stuff like that. I wanted to play around with the super resolution. There's this new super resolution. We do it live. Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, there's this new super resolution mode in Photoshop that I really wanted to play around with on a stream and see how that that works. I tried I tried it once with with a, a probably a bad image to try it with and it didn't work out the way i wanted it to so um we'll figure that out we can figure that out on a stream but anyway that's basically that's that's it that's the image thanks for thanks for being around when we doing that um uh, yeah, i don't think there's anything else i'd want to do i'm gonna i mean i'm gonna make adjustments again there's, i'm gonna make adjustments um, anyway, really appreciate everybody sticking it out, hanging out with us here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned a little bit. Hope I encouraged you all to express yourselves 
probably again that's probably the main goal is you know encouraging people to photograph more specifically but if that's not your form of art that you like do whatever you like you know draw pictures you know program video games um shoot video do perform dance do performance or whatever you want to do you know but specifically i, I want to get I, i'd like the idea of people getting out and shooting expressing yourself is very healthy i want everybody to be healthy um I do all those except dance. Hey, maybe you should start dancing. Maybe you start dancing, man. It feels good. I dance. I cut rug. I cut rug. I, oh, believe me. And I don't care how I look. You think I'm doing it to look at? No, I'm doing it to have fun. Uh, ask my friends. How many, if I'm at a wedding, you know I'm going to be dancing on the dance floor. You know it. And I don't care how bad I, I'm not a good dancer. I am not a good dancer, so. I don't know what that says, but it, it's you should enjoy it. It's a part of life that you can enjoy. You know, I don't care if you just sit there and just move your fists up and down to the beat, or you know, do your do your do your Pulp Fiction or whatever it is the kids the dances the kids do these days. The, the I think I heard the Macarena is big. Uh, that's like a big dance these days. Um, so do that. But anyway, express yourself. Love yourself, love others, and love life. And I will catch you on the next stream. We're definitely going to be doing stuff on Friday. Photography Friday. We're definitely doing some in-game photography, probably with fo uh, Fallout. That's my game. Uh, so if I see you there, I appreciate it. If you can't make it, have fun with whatever you're doing. And uh, I love you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace out. It's going to take me a second to click this, so that's awkward, but... Um, take it easy. I will see y'all.